stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of non-stop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Hi everybody, I'm Paul Schultz. Welcome to Motorsports Unlimited, part number 278. Today we have a very special treat for you. Our first visit to Raceway Park in Blue Island, Illinois. We told you a few weeks ago there are only three paved ovals in Illinois. We in the Chicago area are fortunate that all three are within easy driving distance. There's Rockford Speedway, about an hour and a half northwest. Grundy County Speedway, which is approximately one hour straight west. And there's Raceway Park, literally seconds from Chicago's southern border. You know, we often get calls from folks in Chicago asking where they can find the closest auto racing. So, we thought it's time that we show you this wonderful, rich in tradition, one-fifth of a mile, paved oval, located just walking distance from Chicago. Well, we have the honor and pleasure of, first of all, once again reintroducing our audience to Wayne Adams Sr. Wayne Adams Sr., welcome once again to Motorsports Unlimited. Thank you, Bill. It's a real pleasure to be here. And you've got a fellow standing next to you that actually owns Raceway Park. Do I have it right? That's correct. He's owned it since 1947. And uh, I had the pleasure of working for him for 42 years as track announcer here. And uh, I've been gone three years now, and I miss it a little bit, and I think he misses me. <laughs> well, we'll find out about that. First of all, uh, this is Pete Jenin. And Pete, if I'm not saying it right, please say so. No, no, it's Jenin. J-E-N-I-N. Real easy. And Wayne was right. I do want him back. <laughs> uh, Wayne is a terrific guy. He's a, in, in fact, we've got a few announcers that I consider the epitome of race car announcers. And certainly Wayne Adams Sr., along with Jan Gabriel, and I'm going to leave somebody else off if I don't mention, but these two guys are on that top shelf with these things. How long has it been since you've owned Raceway Park? Well, since 1947, but I mean, Wayne is a Bill Stern, and he is worse than uh, a Harry Carey. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to take some kneeling here today. Now, I'll tell you what I got you guys out here for. First of all, there's a number of things I want to talk about today uh, as far as Raceway Park is concerned. I consider this a Chicagoland treasure. People often call me and ask me, what is the closest racetrack to Chicago? Well, I'm telling you folks, this is it. We can't even tell you that it's a half an hour away or 15 minutes away. It's literally seconds away because when I look down Ashland Avenue, I can see the Chicago's southern border. We're, what, maybe a couple thousand yards away from Chicago? That's about right. 119th Street, I think, is uh, Chicago border. This is 127th. Right, so it's, I mean, it's, it, you, you, can, you can literally see it from here. Uh, so this is the closest racetrack uh, uh, to Chicago, and I consider it one of Chicago's absolute treasures, and I had the, the, the pleasure of racing here several times myself. We're going to get into all that as we go through the program. But first, what I want to find out is a little bit about the history of the track. And Wayne, we've had on the program, it must have been five years ago now, seems was, to be, uh, I'm sorry? Part number eight. <laughs> Show number eight, and, and this today is, wow. is 278. And today <laughs> is show number 200. So 270 shows ago, we had Wayne Adams Sr. on the show. Wayne, give us an idea of the history of the track. Uh, when did it open? What was it? What did it become, etc.? Well, Bill, Raceway Park was uh, built in 1938. Now, I was only 19 years old at the time, but I had been in racing a couple of years. And uh, I saw part of the early construction here, and it opened in September of 1938. And I attended the very first race, and uh, Harry McQuinn won that in a midget. Uh, the track was a lot different uh, than you see today, of course. Uh, the track was dirt. It had four distinct corners when it was built. It had uh, two by 12 guardrails. 2 by 12 lumber around the outside of the track as guardrails. Now, it was originally built as a midget track, as, 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 if I remember well, right, but, but help me if I'm wrong. Please, I want to be accurate here. Well, the story is that it was built originally with the hope of running dogs. They were going to raise <laughs> dogs here. <laughs> that's what it was. But, uh, wait, 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 you're saying? That's exactly what it was. Yeah. It was going to be a dog track. 
uh, the builders decided that the uh, Illinois was going to put in dog racing, legalized dog racing, and they wanted to have a jump on them, and they built a racetrack so they could race dogs. But uh, the dog racing didn't come out, didn't come through, so they made it into a midget racing track. And midget racing at that time was in its infancy, really. And uh, it yeah, was. We should remind our audience because we just did the Grundy County uh, Speedway mm -hmm. thing with the midgets, and the midgets uh, actually started in the early 30s. So that this track That's opened correct. in 38, this was right about the time riding the wave of the midgets. That's correct. The first midget race I ever saw in Chicago was in 1936, and it was indoors at the old armory at 124th and Cottage. Uh, they had raced midgets a couple of years prior to that, but uh, this became one of the greatest midget tracks that you have ever that anyone has ever seen the surface was great although Jenin improved the surface a great deal after he took it over well let well, me stop you right there first of all, first of all uh, Allison let me come back there. I just was going to say I, I never knew the midgets ever uh, raced in dirt I thought that was always a pavement oh no no midgets raced wow. both dirt and pavement now th the question I want to ask you is when did it become pavement now was Pete involved did he have it paved was I, I, maybe I should ask you Pete did you, were you the one that had it paved absolutely and, and what and year was that? Like, uh, the other thing I want to correct mm, a little bit about the dog racing. I did have dog racing. Yes, he did. Really? I moved 105 dogs out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and put them on this track. I had more state's attorney, police, <laughs> everybody around me, and there was money flying in the grandstand left and right. Nobody was arrested. Uh, how but, long did this go on for? Uh, it, every night I run them. I mean, how long? I run them on a Wednesday, wasn't it, Wayne? For a whole year. For, for a whole, whole year whole you did this? Jeez. Oh, yeah. And I thought by that time our city, I mean our politicians would get smart. Now they're talking about gambling, riverboat, all of this. Well, it's got to come to it. Well, you, you, there's no question. It's an excellent source of revenue. And we, in my own view on it, is that we shouldn't be inflicting our morals on other people. If they want to gamble, that's up to them. But let me get back just a minute. What, what provoked you to pave the track? Well, uh, the maintenance was too much. I had wow. steamrollers. I had graders. I was working day and night, and I was running four nights a week, every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was impossible to keep track in condition all the time so therefore I decided to pave it and when I paved it it relieved me or otherwise I wouldn't be alive today I'm only 75 years old and I this track is 54 and I've been I spent 44 of it here that's longer than a lot of people live <laughs> yeah, you got that right. you, you let, wanted to add let me add something to that uh, I can give you another reason why Pete paved the track because we were running, we started running stock cars, and we're running stock cars four nights a week. Now at that time, they were regular stock cars off of a used car lot. And these fellows would come in here, we would have a hundred cars a night. That was a minimum. We'd have a wow. hundred. Yeah, that and had to tear the track up something terrible. Well, the thing is, the track had to be wet down considerably before the start of the program. So then these cars would come out and they'd make hot laps and a hundred cars making 10, 15, 20 laps apiece. And uh, the drivers used to complain because they would take a bushel of clay the underneath of, the fenders. Four bushels race. per car. They're, they're doing every what? night. No, they robbed they're, my race. They're robbing your but, race. <laughs> but, but the thing was this, that I had a special compound with brick dust and uh, blue clay. I came out of Chicago Tunnel and uh, that's what was disappearing. I had the world's busiest speedway and I still have it. Okay, well, so it, part of it was that they were carrying the racetrack away from you. You had to That's do right. something. All right, so now Raceway Park is paved. As I said, I've raced here a number of times. We've had an opportunity to find out a little bit about it from guys that were really there from the very, very beginning. And I want to thank you. And if we don't get to some of these great race cars that you've got here. And by the way, Chuck, if you could, just take your camera and pan left a little bit. Uh, I want to show the audience that we've got this marvelous T-Bird. And Christine, whose T-Bird is that over there? Jan Gabriel. That's exactly right. And Wayne, you apparently know Jan. Oh yes, Jan, uh, Jan and I worked together here in 1970, and uh, from there Jan uh, uh, branched out, and uh, today he's big-time television announcer. He's done very, very, very well, well, and, and, and uh, he says he learned much from you. He <laughs> admires you greatly. And, Pete, you, yeah. and you can also tell Jan I have a 57 T-Bird like this original.
Only 800 miles. Ask him if he's interested. I, I, will, I will do something. That's a commercial. <laughs> That's a little commercial. Okay, listen, I want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with us. And uh, Debbie, uh, Debbie, I, I knew I would do that. Robin, I am so sorry, Robin. You are brand new with us. You would step forward here, man. Uh, are you getting the gist of it so far? Yes, thank you. Okay, well, you'll see this is going to be a lot of fun here today. You're going to learn all about Raceway Park and all the really neat cars that they've got here. And you're going to meet a lot of terrific people, as we always do on Motorsports Unlimited. Right now, I want to put you to work, and here's what I want you to do. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. How many times do you have a chance to find out the history of an entity from the folks that were there and helped make it happen? Thank you, Pete Jennon and Wade Adams Sr. Let's rev things up now and meet one of the top late model competitors at Raceway Park. Well, how about it, Robin? Is this a nice race car? Yeah, it's a very nice race car, Bill. Yeah, you are going to see tonight they have some absolutely exceptional cars here. Now, you are brand new with Motorsports Unlimited. This is the first time. Is this the first time you've ever been to a racetrack? Yes, it is. Okay, so you're going to learn a lot of things, and I can tell you right now that Allison is going to embarrass us with the dirt track people, and I'm going to show you how she's going to do it right now. Watch. Allison? I know what i got to do. Come over here. I know what you're going to do. Go ahead. I like these cars better. I think oh, they're Oh, you prettier. are going to get bopped. You are absolutely going to get bopped. You know what? Chris always says you're not supposed to do that. I said I do it for fun, though. I like them both. You're the only one that could get away with that. Now, first of all, first of all, you are? Kevin Reedy. Uh, Kevin, you're a late model. Again, an absolutely exceptional piece. And it is true. One of the things we do come to expect from the pavement late models is that these are really sleek looking cars. Yeah, and we put a lot of time, a lot of money into them and just try and get them to keep them real clean. Now, at this track, and I want to help our audience understand, they essentially have three different divisions of racing. They have late models, uh, street stocks, and sportsmen. Do I have it right? Right. They just started the sportsman division this year, and um, they just it's like a trial basis. And oh. then they have their street stocks after that. Okay, so what we've got here is a late model, and as a matter of fact, if I understand correctly, you were second in the point standing last year? Yes. Okay, so this is one of the top-running late models, and if you can, Chuck, if you can pan your camera over just a little bit, just take a peek. This over here, we have a street stock car. Right, it's a street stock car there. That's actually a pretty nice looking car too. Oh yeah, they are. These guys put a lot, every division, they put a lot of time and a lot of money in these cars and they try and keep it nice every weekend. Okay, do you have to meet templates or anything like that? Yeah, there's heights of the body and everything like that. We, we come pretty close, you know, and you know, you get tagged and erect and, you know, keep a couple weeks, but we usually try and keep them right about where you have them on opening day. Okay, Robin, now you're again new with this. Do you know what I mean when I ask a question? Do you have to meet templates? I'm not sure, Bill. Okay, I want you to step out here and I'll show you how these guys have to do. You see the shape and the profile of the car, the roof line, the hood line, and for that matter, the rear deck and all the rest of it. They have a template, a cardboard or a plywood or an aluminum template that matches the car that this is supposed to be. And what is this supposed to be, Kevin? It's a Grand Prix. Okay, so this is a Grand Prix, so they will have to meet the templates that a Pontiac Grand Prix from the factory, even though it is bewildering that these cars come out kind of looking nothing like a Grand Prix. Would you agree? Yes. <laughs> okay, step back <laughs> no. in line now. Yes, Allison. You know, these do kind of look like the dirt track cars with that pointy edge. They don't look as much like the cars as... <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah. No, but it isn't the rounded, like, Venturini's car is mo looks okay. like a car. Good. This, this looks is a, more This is like a perfect like observation. That's what I want to know. There, yeah, is a, there is a difference when you have to run Winston Cup, when you have to run ARCA, when you have to run, for example, at Raceway Park, Grundy County Speedway, or Ileana. Kevin, do I have it right? They are different. There right. are different requirements for how close you have to be to the original right, body right. style. Some bodies are all steel. Ours is like part fiberglass, part steel, and it does change depending on the, whoever has the rules at the track. Right, depending on the sanctioning body and all right. that sort of thing. And we should also say that what you are seeing there with Winston Cup, and for that matter with ARCA, that's very expensive to do. And I'm not sure we can generate the kind of revenue at local short tracks to support that kind of cost. We well, don't get the kind of, they get a lot of backing, they get a lot of people in the stands, like, you know, twice as many people will show up and even car wise too and it costs you know they got big sponsors and everything like that and this is more like a local 
Most of the sponsors here are local businesses within maybe 15, 20 minutes ride from the racetrack. Right, exactly. It's all look so so the, the rules allow them this flexibility and it has to do with lowering the cost a little bit. But doesn't it almost seem like if you buy a car, let's say from a car lot and you fix it all up, you rev it all up, isn't it cheaper just to have the car look like a car than to cut it all up oh, and put all this Allison, stuff on it? Allison, you've been with Motorsports Unlimited for two years now. These could, none of these cars are modified street cars. These are hand built from no. scratch. There's not. I'll bet there's not a. How many pieces on here do you think are from General Motors? Uh, none. Yeah, no, there's nothing on here from General Motors. It just seems so much cheaper that way. Just stick a big engine you in there. You know how dopey it would look if you saw these these production cars running around here. I think it would be cute. Oh, it's awful. Anyway, if you, I'll come back to you in a second. Please don't run away. I want to introduce your crew members. First of all, you are Al Herin. And where are you from, Al? Crestwood. And how long have you been with uh, Kevin? I've been with Kevin for three years. Okay, you're trying to get his uh, seat, right? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> I'm just trying to put together a winning season for both of us. Okay, well, I'm going to come back to you, so don't run away. And you are? Butch Ernst. And this is the enforcer. I can tell by this guy's <laughs> size already. Where are you from? Chicago. And how long have you been with him? I've been with him two years. I'm also a sponsor. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, what kind of a shop do you have? Top Shelf Lounge. Oh, okay, great. Well, boy, I'll tell you, we need more folks like this participating in motorsport. That's for darn sure. Am I right, Kevin? Right. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. And you are? Dan Ernst. Say it again? Dan Ernst. And, uh, oh, brother. So you get dragged in here kicking and screaming, or do you like it? I like it. You like it all right? Just get told what to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, could we, this guy's a young guy. Can we get away with this gopher? <laughs> is that what we use it for? <laughs> and I got news for you, son. I was one for a long time, and we need him. And all I can tell you is steal with your eyes. Learn. These guys obviously know what they're doing okay and you are mike miller and where are you from mike blue island or uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see and yeah, every, our park. audience always thinks this is easy out here from cal park for, oh from Cal park that's yeah. just down the street yeah okay and how long have you been with him well i've known kevin for a long time this is the first year i've helped him on his car ah okay now i've got a question guys any of you guys have ambitions to drive any of you guys trying to move him out of his seat no I, well i think everybody ha would like to drive the car I always think it's, that too, but you'd be surprised how many guys say no. It's not as easy as it looks, though. Oh, boy, is it not ever. How about yourself? Ambition to drive one day? I would like it. Oh, okay, <laughs> I, I certainly would too. How about yourself? Not in the near future. Okay, well, uh, and trust me, guys, we need lots more of you guys than we do the driver up here. I'm just always curious about it. And how about yourself? No, no. I, I you like building? And I'd rather build them and maintain them doing what I'm doing right now. I'm happy with that. As long as we can win with him driving, I'm happy. I'd like oh. to try. What? I'd like to try. Well, one of these days we're going to get you in a car, and Tony has already talked about that. We're going to do something to you. Kevin, it seems like you've got a great crew here, and you've got some support from uh, from a local establishment. I think that's terrific. Right. No, we got a lot of help with the people around here, and there's there's quite a few more people besides who's out here right now to help on the car. And maybe one guy helps one night, another guy two nights, but you need all the help you can get. Okay. How much information are you willing to give away technically? As far as what? First okay. Night out with the cars. Okay. So well, but you've, raced, you've raced at, at Raceway for quite a while, so give me an idea. Just ballpark. If a person wants to come down here and run, how much stack? Here? At, yes, Raceway. at Raceway Park. Three and a half in the back, two in the front. Okay, so you're running three and a half in the back, two in the front. How about toe out? Quarter inch. Quarter inch. So that's pretty standard stuff yeah, like that. How about a gear? That's depending on who drives it and what kind of motor it is. It varies. Just well, give me a ballpark. It, it, and we're assuming you're running one to one in the trans. 705. Oh, you're running that short. Yeah. Okay. This is and one other question, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, Allison, you have. I was just gonna say this is a very flat course. It's not very high up on the this, sides at all. You talk about work. I've ridden this, driven this track many times. I'm gonna tell you something. You wouldn't believe how much work it is to run this track. You never. Am I right? You never rest. No, this is this track is it's it's small, but it's it's a hard track to get around. Yeah, and you know whose favorite track this is? David Weltmeyer. You bet. Dave, <laughs> David Weltmeyer, the famous <laughs> David Weltmeyer, he still loves Raceway Park. He says it's his home track, and he always enjoys running at Raceway Park. And I think our audience, certainly everybody knows who, who uh, uh, Dave Weltmeyer is, that's for sure. Anyhow, uh, I, I thank you for the information that you shared with us a little bit. And again, we don't want to give everything away, but we want to give people a little bit of a taste of where to start when you come down here. In other words, you wouldn't want to come down here uh, without any stagger, would you? No, not at all. <laughs> not unless you want to sit in stands and with the car. Okay, Mike White told us years ago when we interviewed him that it'd be three, four years ago, and Mike is a real tough competitor here at Raceway Park. I think he'd agree? Yeah, okay. he'll be here tonight. Oh, is that right? Okay, now, my question is, he said that the really the only real place to pass here is coming out of four. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. And because? The other turns are so tight, this one's got a little bit more room. Right, it's, it, the track actually dictates that. Right. Okay, well, Kevin and guys, thanks for spending some time with us. We very much appreciate it. You, I'm telling you, you guys should be very proud. I can tell our audience, this doesn't always show on television. The car is beautiful. It is detailed perfectly. It's just an excellent example. These guys have a lot to be proud of. And, Kimmy, why don't you tell the camera? We can't get you to talk, apparently. <laughs>
Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Little did Allison know that her wish to drive was going to be answered. Now, before we go any further, let's meet the girls on today's show. Hi, I'm Robin Cross. I'm Allison Damore. I'm Kim Donahue. And I'm Chris Schutz. Thank you, girls. Now let's return to Raceway Park and meet one of the top street stock racers. Well, now we have another division of race cars that races here at Raceway Park, and we have something more important than that. It looks like we have a terrific family effort. First of all, you are Mike Carpenter. And uh, you are? Eileen. Eileen Carpenter, Eileen. I assume? Eileen. Eileen. Eileen Carpenter, though. Right, yes. That's yeah, not always the same these days, you know? <laughs> and you are? Mike Carpenter. And? Katie Carpenter. Boy, are you a doll. Uh, the whole family's involved here? This is it. This is the whole crew. Um, we do everything on the car ourselves. All the work is done by us. Every nut turned on it is done by somebody in this family here. Well, I think that's absolutely... Do you enjoy this? Do you get dragged oh, in yes. kicking and screaming? Oh, no way. I'm 100% behind him. Okay, well, that's... Do you desire to drive? Yes. Ah, <laughs> here we go. Now the secret is out. we got a driver here. Uh, what I want to ask you, though, can you give our audience an idea? We just look at the late model division, which, of course, is the premier division that literally any of the stock car tracks you go to. And then there are other divisions that run at this racetrack, street stocks and sportsman cars. Can you, this is a street stock. You're a street, street stock. Boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> street stock racer. Tell us what a street stock is. Well, street stock is basically a, a beginning class for, the, for getting into stock car racing. We've got pretty much stock cars. Uh, we have to keep the suspension pretty much in stock alignment. Uh, no moving of engines and anything like that. We do cheat a little bit on the engines that most everybody puts a cam into them. Uh, are, are the other competitors paying attention here? Yeah. <laughs> everybody knows that. We're supposed to be pretty stock, but most everybody puts a cam in at least anyway. But it doesn't really take a whole lot of engine to do it in this class. You've got to get the chassis dialed in and you just got a lot of luck is involved too. There's, there's an awful lot of traffic to go through. They put 20 to 25, sometimes 30 cars in a feature. And it gets pretty exciting with a lot of, a lot of crashing and action. So. Well, I must say you keep yours exceptionally nice for all that crashing and action. Now, how do you do that? Well, th well, we've been lucky so far this year. The other side doesn't look this good, though, so don't put the camera on the other side. <laughs> okay, now don't run away. I want to talk to Allison down here for a minute. Allison, this is the kind of car that you're proposing all the time in that this really oh, is a General Motors car. It's a car. Yeah, it's this, a car. This, this really is a car, but the, but the point is this thing is also going to be much slower around the racetrack than the late models. But it looks like a car. You like the ones that look like cars. Yeah. Yeah, you and Jan Gabriel both, by the way. Yeah, oh, Jan is a very wise man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we continually try to explain to our girls the differences between these cars, and we've been doing a lot of things with late model dirt cars and all that, and of course they have just, uh, you know, literally uh, sheet metal and, and tissue paper bodies, and it's hard for her to understand why we don't have cars like this, and I try to understand to make these things really go fast around oval track courses and stuff. You have to do. You have to build them from scratch. Am I right? It did have to come from the bottom up because the chassis are not really designed for this type of stuff at all from the factories. So any modifications that we do, the car doesn't want to turn right anymore from the springs and the way we've got the alignment set on the front end. So it's it's just about impossible to try and take one of these and make them go like a late model. You just you're, have to start from scratch with the frame up on it for that. You're exactly right. And this is an area for a person to get started in and learn some of the tricks, and then you find out why they have to look like the way the late models do look. And excuse me once again, when a girl on Motorsports Unlimited has a question, we stop everything. Christine? I, I couldn't really hear what you were saying over there, but I was just wondering if he's interested in doing a late model at some point. Good question. Great question. Uh, she's asking, do you want to go late model? You better believe I'd love to go late model. Well, how long have you been doing this? This is my second year in full competition. Uh, When's late model going to happen then? <sighs> yeah, they well, I, should, I, should, I better ask the boss. <laughs> When's it going to happen? <laughs> We're talking about significantly more money, right? A considerable amount more money, yeah. yeah. But, but you've seen, I mean, I, I'll tell you something. We do racing programs from all over. We talk to all kinds of people, and I can tell you the one common thread that everyone has. The guys that are successful at this have a supportive wife. Every single one of them. And it looks like, I'm, it looks like you got the right girl here. You seem to really support him on this. I am. I'm it doesn't bother you when he needs an engine? No. He uh, does it himself. 
Yeah, but what about when they have to roll out one of those dirty $25,000 jobs? <laughs> oh, well, then we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Son, I got to ask, how about you? You have any interest in driving one day? Uh -huh. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you enjoy going to the races. You're not dragged here. Mm -mm. Okay, now I've got to ask, because this is, it's maybe a little different with the little girl. I won't bite you. Come right out of here, honey. Okay, now, do you want to drive one day? Yeah. Now, wait, you shook your head no and nodded yes. Which is it? It's yes. You would like to drive one day? Well, you're a little bit away from that, though, in age, aren't you? Okay, can I put you to work here for a second? And you got to, and you got to do more than nod your head on this one. Now, can you do it? you got to say some words. Okay, I'm going to walk you forward here just a little bit, like this. And I want you to look, you see that cameraman over there? And I want you to say, don't go away folks, we'll be right back. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back. It's nice to see how many racing teams are family operations. Now, let's look at another of the top division late models. <laughs> What do you think? You guys clash terribly with this one. <laughs> I think so. This is a gorgeous color. Yeah, I'll tell you what. My first stock car that I raced at O'Hare Stadium was exactly this color, so I'm a big fan of orange. Now, let me get down here to this end. We're going to talk to the driver, and then we'll talk to the real important guy. First of all, you are? Ken Federin. Uh, Ken, where are you from? Hazelcrest, Illinois. Okay, so that's sort of right in the neighborhood then. Yes, it's right down the street from here. Okay, how long have you been racing late models? Uh, this first year. Okay, and what did you race before that? Last year we raced hobby stock, and that was the first year that we actually started doing any kind of stock car racing. Well, if you don't mind me asking this, you're not a 16-year-old. What no. would provoke you that late in life? To, or were you, were you doing something, sprint cars? or We were doing drag racing prior to this, uh, about in the early 70s. Okay, we well, that's a, that's, a, that's a great story. I've often said on the show that, that I, I myself, I did lots of drag racing. I did lots of oval track racing. And I always said that I took a bunch. I learned a bunch from everyone that I did and was able to transfer some of that knowledge. To, have you found that to be true at all? Some of it, yeah. But the difference between drag racing and stock car racing is totally different. Well, that's for sure. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Okay. Immensely. Okay, I'm going to come back to you, so don't run away. But we've got to talk to this really important guy, right? <laughs> right. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, first of all, you are? Ron Jordan. And Ron, where are you from? Uh, South Holland, Illinois. And why do I say you're the important guy? Uh, probably because I'm the owner and the sponsor. Yeah, boy, are you the important guy, that's for sure. What would provoke you to get involved with a late model racing effort? Uh, it just looked like a lot of fun. We came out a couple years ago to watch, and uh, after years of not drag racing, it was just a lot of fun to come out and see racing again, and we decided to start up and try it all again. In a sense, my feeling of it, every time I made a transfer from one thing, and I was always forced by economics or something to move from one thing to another, or geography or traveling or something like that, every time I did, to me, it was like a breath of fresh air. I was like revitalized, all the new learning that you had. Uh, do you guys find that at all? Absolutely. The relearning experience from uh, drag racing to this, it's a whole nother ball game. It's really a lot of fun getting back into it. Well, I, I, think, I, I think it is. I, to me, it's just like, a, as I say, a breath of fresh air into your life. Now, oh, don't yeah. run away, because I'll come back to you guys. I want to make sure we get the entire crew in here. And you are? Terry Solomon. And where are you from, Terry? South Holland, Illinois. Again, right in the neighborhood then. Right. Okay, I got another question for you, so don't run away. And you are? Jason Federin. And where are you from, Jason? Hazelcrest, Illinois. Okay, everybody right down here in the south, southern area. And you are? Ray Para. And where are you from? Hazelcrest, Illinois. Now, you guys know this guy's got a baseball hat. Oh, we've got two baseball hats? This is motorsport, guys. We don't want to have baseball. I want to see Chevy hats or something on you there. <laughs> and you are? Chris Jordan. Uh, and where are you from, Chris? South Holland, Illinois. Okay, Chris, you're real young. I'm always particularly interested when I see people that are young. Are you, are you dragged here by your parents, or do you like being here? You want to be here? Yes. You like the cars? Okay, my question to you guys is, to you guys that aren't driving, my question is, are you, try, are you going after the driver's seat? Do you want to drive? Yes. Okay, this guy is right up front. You want to watch this guy, you might not want him around the crew too much. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind driving. Okay, there's another one. And? Yeah, I wouldn't mind driving. Okay. And? Definitely. Uh -oh. oh, boy, this guy's got a problem crew here right off the bat. I'm going to ask the owner's sponsor. Of course, if you want to drive, you could drive, right? Yeah, but that's just not my thing. I don't really care to drive. You like to build? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so you were involved with the building of the car? Yeah, uh, the motor and some of the chassis work. Yeah. Okay, tell us, what have we got here? It's a 355 Chevy uh, in a 91 Camaro body. Okay, and what about the rest of the drive line? Uh, what kind of trans, what kind of rear end, and what's the chassis? It's a General Motors transmission with the uh, Franklin quick change rear end, and it's a uh, early design Howe chassis. 
Okay, again, a how chassis is a very popular pavement car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get back over here to the driver, make sure he hadn't left him out. Now, this is your first year in late models. We talked to Mike White a long time ago, and Mike White said the place you pass here is coming out of four. Have you found that to be true? Yeah. Okay, because the track tightens up coming out of two? Yes, it does. Okay, here's the question then. What do you do with the sewer cover down there going into two? We're, we're just where you have to start setting up your pass. You try and avoid it <laughs> at all costs. You know, I asked Mike about that years ago, and you know what he said to me? He says, well, sometimes it actually kind of helps you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it does. Okay, uh, guys, again, terrific looking car, great looking effort. Uh, do you enjoy it? I've got to ask you if you enjoy Raceway Park, because as I've said before, I've raced here before, and I really developed an affection for this. How about yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you like it? Oh, yes. Okay. Like and ultimately, where do you want to go with this? Yeah. I want you to dream big. If you want to, <laughs> if you want an Indy car seat or if you want an Aaron Hart seat, I want you to say it. Oh, no, yeah. I wouldn't mind a Winston Cup seat. Okay. Yeah. That would be an ultimate to you? Yeah. Okay. Guys, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Please don't run away. i got to check down here with the other girls. We've got a brand new girl on Motorsports Unlimited today, and that's always an exciting time. Robin, hopefully you're getting the idea of it, but I made a mistake, and I put you over here close to Allison, and I forgot to tell you, don't listen to anything Allison <laughs> says or does. Poor Allison. <laughs> always getting picked up. <laughs> okay, maybe you two guys together would tell the camera. Don't go away, right, folks. We'll, we'll be right, right back. We told you Raceway Park featured three divisions of race cars. We've showed you late models and a street stock. Now let's look at a top sportsman car. <laughs> Well, Allison, by the way, did you know that this is the first day of summer? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. You know, we have a fascinating story here. Uh, this young woman over here happens to also be a driver. I'm going to get along really well with her. Yes, yes. In fact, I've got a surprise for you later, maybe. Uh, first of all, you are? My name's Don Wilcher. And uh, where are you from, Don? I'm from Hammond, Indiana. Ah, okay. And you are? Robert Wilcher from Hammond, Indiana. Okay. How do we, I just introduced that your wife is a driver. Who gets, how do we decide who drives? Her car come. Her car is coming. So this you, is my car. So you have your own car? I have my own car. You race every week? Yes, every night. Okay, I've got to ask the most important question. Who's faster? Him, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you just saying that, or is he quicker? No, he's quicker. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's running the uh, street stocks, and I'm running the sportsman's. Okay, so you don't run in the same class? We, no. we did Maybe. up until last uh, this year. I switched divisions. And who was quicker? He was. Okay, okay, that, that'll, keep, that, that'll keep peace in the family. Yes, Allison. Does that cause a lot of family fights? It would with what? me. No, we get along real well. We get along better since we race together in that. Who does the uh, mechanical work on the cars? We both do. You do it too? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. uh, uh, let me test you then. Uh, how much stagger are you running? I run one and a half inches across the front and two and a half to three in the back. Okay, and do you run the same setups as she does? Yeah. Okay, so you guys kind of agree on the setups? She does my tires. Really? Yes. Well, that's when you, when you say does your tires, explain to our audience what that means. She does all the air pressure and the stagger and that on my tires. And okay, that. so she's the one that measures them and, and marks them? Marks them. Okay. Puts the right air pressure in them. Who can explain to me? Now, this is your car. Right. And this is a? Sportsman. Sportsman. Explain the sportsman class. What does it mean? Sportsman's class is a new division here. It oh. just started this year and that. You can run the screw jacks and racing springs and stuff and that. In her class, you can't run none of that. Okay, so in other, in other words, the sportsman would go between the street stock and the late model. Right, okay. exactly. And what kind of lap times do you run? Right now I'm turning uh, 13 sixes. Okay, 13 and, what, sevens. and what do the late models run? The late models are running in the 11s. That quick, really? Wow, and, and how about the street stocks? What do they turn? The street stocks are probably, well, usually in the 14s, low 14s, and the high 13s. Okay, so you're about a second quicker or half yeah. second quicker? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Okay, well, and what, they allow you to do more with the engine and everything? Oh, yeah, we're allowed to do anything we want to the engine. Oh, and so you, the street stocks, they can't. It's got to be stocked. So you could roll in one of those $25,000 girdies in here? Oh, yeah, definitely. Is that what you got? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now, before we go any farther, first let me talk to you uh, and have you introduce your sons. First of all, you are? Jimmy. Uh, what's this, give me the full name, please. Jimmy Hunt. Uh, and where are you? Well, obviously you're from the same place. Uh, yeah, Hammond, now, Indiana. Now, hey, coming from Indiana, that sounds like coming from another state. That really sounds like a, but it's not really very far from here, no. is it? No, it's only about maybe half an hour drive. 
So, it, it, so even though I live in Chicago, you guys are closer from Indiana. Yeah. Because it took me almost an hour. Yeah, just about. It's I should say I'm way from the north side. So, yeah. and you are. Sean Hunt. Uh, and uh, again, you, you live with the same family. Now, I've got a question for you guys. You're here with your family, obviously. Both your mother and father drive. Are you dragged here kicking and screaming and rather be someplace else, or do you really enjoy this? No, I love coming here. I like working on the cars with my dad and mom and all that. Oh, any interest in driving one day? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Do you guys know about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Are you for Are you for it or again? The track would let them uh, let me do it. I would put them on a uh, race car next year. Okay. Well, that's, that's too young. Well, you, you're right, but I, but you got a good attitude. Cause now I'm worried about this guy because he's got a bull shirt on. This doesn't. This sh this should say a Chevy or something. How about yourself? Are you interested in being here? Or? Oh yeah, I can't wait. But I I like the bulls. Though. The bulls got to got to be. But race cars come first. Okay, so you, so you're a racer then? Yeah, next year. Okay. I got to get my grades up though. So. Okay, well, how old are you? Seventeen. Okay, so the grade deal is part of it. Yes. Okay, you want those grades to be up there, but then you're not against these guys participating. No, no not at all. Okay, I'm well, for them racing 100 percent. Okay, well that that's great. But we did we interviewed Davey Weltmeyer some time ago, and we had his dad on. His dad was the same way. In fact, he was racing out here at like 16 or right. something. Did you know that? Oh yeah, I was racing out here then too. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, guys, I want to thank you for spending a little bit of time with us. And do you mind if I put your wife to work for a moment? No. Okay, please step right on out here. I want you to look at that camera. You know what I want you to do? No. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Robert Wiltshire is in the midst of his best season ever and later in the evening would go on to set fast time in the sportsman division and win the feature. Now let's look at another one of the beautiful Raceway Park late models. <laughs> Christine, you know, it has been a number of years since I've been to Raceway Park. They have some great late models. Yeah, but uh, as I recall the last time when we were here, they did then too. Yeah, th remember we were even mm -hmm. wondering, because they all had the, the gear it. drive, they had the gear drive cams, right. and we thought maybe they were supercharged, and they allowed it, and we were, I had to go into pits and find out. They have pretty cars. They really do, and do they still have those uh, gear drive? Well, we're going to talk to the guy right now. First of all, you are? Kirk Harden. Where are you from, Kirk? Romeoville. Ah, so you do travel a little bit then. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're just talking about gear drive uh, cams in the engine. You run a gear drive cam? No. Okay, when we came to Raceway Park years ago, it was the most noticeable thing. Apparently, that was a new thing at the time. You know how noisy they were, and I thought it was so cool. I had to go into pits and find out what was making all that noise. Tell us, what do you have here? 355 Chevy. Okay, did you build it, or do you have them built? No, we had them built by Flowtech. Okay, and how about a chassis? Uh, how car fit design. Okay, and who does the work? Who puts it together? Me. Now, <laughs> wait a minute. You're a pretty young guy to be putting together a sophisticated piece like this. How old are you? 29. Well, you're not that young then. I guess you can. I guess you can do it. How long have you been racing? Four years. Okay. I understand that you won last night. Yes. And first feature this year. First feature this year. Now, how long have you been? I, I, four hit, years. Four years. Uh, how'd you do in points last year? Uh, fifth. So winning the feature. This is, this is important. Yeah. I mean, this is an old hat to you. No, it's, we need a couple more, though. Okay, well, congratulations. First of all, I want to tell you, I, I love it when the guys keep the cars in the kind of shape that you guys do. This thing is beautiful. I mean, you, you apparently take a lot of pride in your... Yes. Okay, it's a, it's a beautiful car. You'd be congratulated on it. Who do we have here? Should we this talk to him? My son, Jason. Okay, yeah, I mean, let's have him do it so he can get used to the camera. Why don't you tell the audience who you are? Jason Harden. Okay, boy, you sound sure. Now, I want to ask you, does he, you come here because you have to, because he's your dad, or do you like coming? I like coming. Yeah, do you want to drive one day? Yes. Okay, you're ready now, it sounds like. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I know that they do here at, at uh, Raceway Park is they do have go-kart races. I don't know if it's on a regular basis or not, but this would make a great go-kart track. Yeah. I, you know, it might be something for the youngsters to get started in, you know? Yeah, I think they've been running them here on Sunday mornings. Oh, really? Okay, that's something I should find out a little bit more about. Somebody mentioned it, and I should know more about that. So let me first introduce the rest of your folks, and you are, and I'm standing in your camera shot, I'm sorry. I'm you Rich Halligan. Uh, better do it again. I had the mic. I'm Rich Halligan. And uh, where are you from, Rich? Uh, from Burbank. Okay, and what's your involvement with the car? Uh, this is my son here. Ah, so that's why they said you're the sponsor. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were you proud of the kid? Uh, more than that. Yeah, when he won, the, were you here last night? Oh, yeah. Oh, you had to be thrilled. Uh, he had it coming. He, he's earned it. He's getting better. Well, that's what I hear. The people around here say that this is a rising star now. And uh, I, again, I'm... What, a feature win, our audience should know by now, that's been, been watching motorsports for a while, this is something pretty special. 
Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, uh, there's a lot of guys go their whole career, 20 years, and never do a feature win. Uh, this business teaches determination, and that's what it takes to start winning. It takes determination. Boy, that's the truth. And excuse me, and you are? I'm Phil Coco from Chicago Ridge, Illinois. And uh, what do you do with the with the team? Uh, I'm in the crew. Okay, you engine builder, chassis, uh, or everything? Everything all around. Okay, why do you do it? Uh, just for the hobby. Okay, and do you have I'm the uncle? Ah, so so this is like a family effort then. <laughs> it is. Okay, well that's that's terrific. Now I got to ask you guys, you want to drive? Uh, not really. And? I drove many years ago. I fought 15 years behind a wheel. Okay, so maybe you kind of brought him into it. Yeah, I didn't want to, but uh, <laughs> he's here, you know. Okay, well listen, I want to congratulate. Yeah, wait a minute, we got a question here. Allison, yes. Just a minute. You have to have a question. This is going to sound really dumb, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do they have a choice of what colors to put on their car, or do sponsors direct them in that direction with the racetracks, or do they just have their whatever well, they want? Let me tell you this. First of all, I want, and I mean this sincerely, I'm going to take a moment just to be serious. There is no such thing as a dumb question. If you don't know, please ask, because we don't know what to explain about our sport if people don't know. <laughs> so if you don't know something, that's a great question, sure. Okay, she's asking about the colors of the car. Do you have a choice on colors of the car, or are you dictated by a sponsor or, or by the track? Uh, I sort of dictated my sponsor this year. He wanted white, and I went and painted the car blue when he wasn't looking. <laughs> so it sounds like you don't listen to the dictation. <laughs> okay. okay, listen, thanks for spending a little time with us. Uh, we've got... I'm telling you, they have so many great late models here. I'm very, very impressed. Like I say, to me, Raceway Park is sort of a treasure of Chicago. And I almost call it Chicago, even though it's a few thousand yards away from Chicago. But it's sort of a treasure in Chicago. And I'm delighted to see such a, a, a great-looking crop of late models. It really is inspiring. Uh, Robin, I'm going to try you again. Okay, Bill. You know what I want you to do? Yeah. Go ahead. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Look at two more of these awesome late models. Okay, once again, Allison, what do you think? They got some nice late models here. Yeah, they are nice. Yeah, and uh, you know what? This is going to sound, because I know you don't get this part about the beauty of it that we do, but I want you to step out here and take a look. I'm going to tell you something that's really nice. You see where the exhausts come out the side? Right. To us, that is, to me, that's really cool. Oh, Bell, that, that is cool. That wouldn't strike you as being beautiful. No. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay, come on back here. Awesome. I think it's neat anyway. First of all, you are? My name is Tom Smith. And where are you from, Tom? Now, oh. Tom Smith. Boy, does that sound. Come on. What's your name? <laughs> I'm kidding. What's, where are you from? I'm from Posen. Oh, so you're also a Southside guy. Right. Okay, yeah. and um, tell us a little bit about your car. What have you got here? Uh, I got a 1992 uh, Chevy Lumina with a 350 Chevy uh, small block underneath it. Okay, now what are you allowed here at the late models? Are you allowed to run aluminum engines and things like that? Uh, you can run aluminum engines. It's uh, restricted on uh, carburetor size, weight of the car, depending on... Uh, so is it smart to run an aluminum motor or no? No, we don't have an aluminum motor in here. We have a... Uh, well, what I'm getting at, if you're allowed to do it, I would think you would do it unless they put some weight restrictions or something where it makes it unattractive. Right, you can do it, but uh, costly. Oh, the cost, of course, too, that's for sure. Uh, and how long have you been racing? Uh, first year. This is your first year? Now, you didn't start in late models. Uh, last year I raced uh, four weekends here, and uh, I jumped up to late models. A little bit uh, easier of a class to run with. The late models? Yes. Because? Uh, you got more experienced guys out here, and they stay a little bit cleaner, and the cars are made to go around the track, uh, especially for racing this way, instead of uh, you know building a car from scratch and trying to adapt it to a track. Okay, so in other words, it's your view then that uh, it is not necessary to kind of work your way through the ranks, that you can start with a late model and probably aren't going to be real successful right off the bat if you're patient, or, or have you been successful? Uh, we've been pretty successful. Uh, we've finished a couple top threes, a couple top fives, and uh, I got a experience of racing for the last 10 years. I've been racing uh, motocross for 10 years. Uh. Ah, so you do have some racing background, even though it's motorcycles. Right. Okay. L let me introduce your crew here first. Y you are? Uh, Mark Ruley. And where are you from, Mark? Posen. Okay. And you are? Walter Johnson. From? Middle Othian. Bill? Okay. Yes, Allison. A real quick question. Um, in order for the different divisions, does money have a lot to do with what division you go into? Boy, it probably has everything. <laughs> everything to do? I'd say it has everything to do. Right, everybody wants to do Winston Cup and have Dale Earnhardt's car, but that's $2 million, right? You got it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you had the money, could you do it? Could you jump right into that kind of division? Well, that's. I would say no. 
I would definitely say no. You need a little, little bit of experience, a lot of experience on the, the short tracks, and then probably uh, work your way up to, through the ranks and then uh, go to ARCA and then ASA and then Bush Grand National. But uh, There's a bunch to learn, isn't there? There's a lot to learn. I mean, being a first year outer, you know, we're happy with the cars going around the track, and uh, I'm happy with the way we're finishing right now. But it takes the biggest part of the crew is, you know, keeping the keeping the wheels on the ground and telling the crew members what to, what the car is doing and having them change it. There's no question about it. The best driver in the world cannot get a car that doesn't handle around a racetrack. The car has to work, and the science of this sport is communicating with these guys and getting. Have I got it? That's correct. That's that's a hundred percent. Because whenever I come off the track, if the car's pushing, I'll I'll, I'll, t I'll go to Mark and say, uh, you know, there's something wrong. It's pushing off the turn, or it's pushing in the turn, or it's loose, and he'll correct it, and we'll go back okay, out let's, and try. Okay, let's let's test him, Mark. The car's pushing. What's the first thing you're going to try? And we don't have much time. The car's uh -huh. pushing. What are you going to try? Opening up the stagger and the rear That's, tires. Okay, you're going to run more stagger then. What do you, what do you like to run here? Uh, I can't give them secrets uh, away. Come on. We just had the guy tell us three and a half inches they were well, running. <laughs> everybody knows it already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, listen, it's great. you got crews like that. Uh, please don't run away. I'm going to come back. Uh, we got to get to this end. Girls, what do you think? First day of summer. Oh, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she believes it. Okay, let's get down to this end here. We've left these guys out of this much too long. First of all, you are? Bob Cagle. And where are you from? Chicago. Ah, okay, from now South Chicago? North, north side, up by O'Hare. Oh, so it's a ride for you to come down then? Yes. Okay, you must like Raceway Park. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people do. I personally liked it when I raced too. Let me get the rest of your crew first. You are? Art Bish. Uh, where are you from? Chicago. Okay, also from the north side? Yep. Okay, and we can't leave the... We, we don't need guys in the picture. We want girls. And you are? Sherry Guy. Uh, oh, married to who? <laughs> oh, okay. And you're here because you're, you have to be here. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, do you enjoy car racing? Yeah, I like it. Okay, great. And you are? Les Petto from North Side Chicago. Okay, and what do you do with the team? Well, I basically help uh, Art do mechanics and change tires, repairs, whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes to get the car running again. Okay, and yourself, what do you do with it? Everything. Okay, uh, let, let me have a, a little tip here. Uh, what kind of tow-out you running? Everything. We put the body on it, everything. What kind of tow-out you run? About a half inch. You run that much, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, quarter to half or half quarter for sure? Quarter to half. Okay, and the uh, car is uh, loose. What are you going to try first? <laughs> Turn the bar. I don't know. We don't have, you know, we okay. don't have tires. I was gonna, so exactly, I was going to say. What, you, oh, okay, so the sponsorship <laughs> problems and all that. Okay, real quick question. Where do you want, how long have you been doing this, first of all? Since I was 15, and I'm 30 years old, so 15 years. Okay, and where do you want to go with this? If all the good things that could happen. Um, what is all the way to you? Nice car. Okay, if you, in other words, Earnhardt's seat would suit you. Oh, very. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Well, I want the audience to know what we think about and what we dream about. That Everybody would agree with that? Earnhardt's seat, we'd all be happy with being on the team with that? Yeah, I think so. What? Okay, who else wants to drive besides him? Me. You want to drive? Yeah. And? No, not me. <laughs> and? Not me. I won't get in the car. Okay, you better get rid of this guy. He's going to chase you out of your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks a lot, guys. Please don't run away. Let me get back down here. I didn't ask these guys. Guys? Yes. You guys want to drive? No. no, only the truck to pull the car here. Only the truck? No. Bill? Okay, you can keep these two guys. They're not trying to muscle you out. Yes, Allison? I just want to point out, if Chuck can pan over to the wall, this is that car against that wall. Oh, boy, we better go over here and take a look at this. Is this last night, guys? This is from last night? or Two what? Two weeks ago, we totaled the car. Two weeks ago, you totaled the car? Wait just a minute. Who, who put it back together? We sent it up to Howe. Oh, it was they were bad then. It, the whole front stub and rear stub was... Okay, well listen guys, we've got to run, we've got more to look at here. Chuck, did you get a shot of that? You have to nod your head, no, he's saying no. Go ahead and run up there and I'll get one of these girls over here. <laughs> Robin, I'm going to have you do it again because you're brand new and I want to give you all the experience you can. Tell the camera. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back. Now let's look at a two-car team that competes in different classes. Alright, you folks have heard me say over and over again, do you want to drive, do you want to drive and everything, there's a reason why I do that. But first of all, let me introduce these folks. You are? Don Crittenbrink. Where are you from, Don? Lansing, Illinois. And? Pat Sweetie from Cal City. 
Okay, the reason I ask all the time is the last time you were on our show, you were a crew member, right? Yeah. For? David Waltmeyer. And you're the driver of this car? Yeah. Okay, so these drivers do have to be careful. You guys are coming, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, so any room in Dave's seat yet or no? I don't think so. He's still doing pretty good. Okay, d don't run away now. Let me go over here. And again, when I say that I have to warn these drivers about these crew members, I'm not kidding. First of all, you are? John Brolick from Calumet City. And? Andy Graziano from Chicago. Okay, do you want to drive eventually? Yeah. Are you watching out for this guy? Uh, sometimes. Okay, and the reason I'm making this point about wanting to drive is you were with us when we did the Weltmeyer thing, and you were the guy that said, yeah, you wanted to drive. Well, kind of. I, I told you I didn't want to drive. You caught me saying that I did. Okay, um, but for some, for whatever reason, you're driving. Yeah, I'm driving only when David's not driving. When David's, when we're out of town, I've missed a couple races already this year. When we're out of town, I go with him. I just, this is like a fill-in for me. Okay, and you do it as sort of an educational experience so you can get sharper on, on setting the chassis and everything? Exactly. Okay, do you find it really helpful? Oh, 100%. Okay, 100%. And, and you probably like Raceway Park for a test run. Oh, I, I love this place. Yeah, you and Davey. It's a great place, I tell you. It, it's really enjoyable. Yeah, it really is. Now, we've got to rush because we're running out of time in this program. I want action shots of you guys on this show, and we've got some officials to bring in here and the track champion. We've got to talk to this guy, but I understand trash his car. He's my favorite friend, let me tell you. And he... I don't know who trashed his car last night, but I have a good idea whose brakes weren't working. <laughs> okay, well, let's bring all these guys in here. Please, fellas, come on in here. Uh, we have got, this is the power at Raceway Park, and we've got the whole group. Please, guys, just line right up here. Okay, and I've got the track champion here. I'm going to come back to him. Uh, so, first of all, introduce yourself. Bob Tulaski. And what do you do here, Bob? I'm the pit steward. And what does that mean? I make the lineups, uh, go in, uh, in the pits and inspect cars and... Uh, help out on a track when there's wrecks and everything. Okay, but you don't have to fight the guys? Oh, uh, once in a while. The big guy at the end said he's the yeah, one. Yeah, I, I let him do all the, all the heavy work. I assist him if he needs some assistance. <laughs> okay, and you are? Roger Smith. I'm the starter. Uh, Roger Smith. You uh, own GM? <laughs> no, wrong one. Wrong one. Uh, and you're the starter? Right. Okay, you, you make these guys real disciplined, real heads-up starts? Try. <laughs> you try. try. It's not easy, is it? No, it's not easy. No, I'm telling you, folks, the starter's got one of the toughest jobs at any racetrack, other than the guy that does all the fighting in the pits. And you are? Dick Wright. And Dick, what is your job here? I do all the arguing. You're the one that does the arguing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, essentially, what do we got? We've got three divisions here, and tell us how your program works. Uh, what do you do? Heat races, trophy dashes? Trophy how do dashes, heat races. Trophy dashes in all three divisions? Yes, sir. And then heat races? Yes, sir. Uh, and then three features. And then three features. And how long does it take to run the program off? Two hours. Okay, you can get it in in that time? Yeah. Okay, on well, a good night. On a good night. And yeah. without a lot of last crashes. night wasn't a good night, but we can do it on a good night. Well, speaking of last night not being a good night, let me come down here. <laughs> First of all, I understand that you are last year's track champion. Pat Eklund. Uh, okay, and, and is that true? You're last year's track champion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened last night. Well, it was evidently a chain reaction and uh, somebody, one of the fellows in the front of the pack on a first lap had some problems and uh, uh, just everybody started stacking up and unfortunately got caught in the middle of a wreck. A big about 18 car wreck. How bad is the car? Uh, they're still at the garage fixing it so hopefully in another hour or so hopefully. Oh you're gonna try to make the program there? They're gonna try and make it yeah. Okay yeah. I didn't ask you where you're from. Uh, Harvey. Okay and how long have you been doing this? <laughs> Longer than I like to admit. I think this is my 22nd year. Oh you don't look old. I'm sorry. Forgive me you look about. Uh, am, I, Thank you. am I wrong? You look about 22, 23 years old. I'm sorry. How old are you? <laughs> I'll be 40 this year. Oh, well, boy, I hope I look that young. Uh, I guess I have to ask you the question. Have you been racing Raceway Park all this time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've <laughs> run around uh, Grundy and Ileana a few times, but not uh, not a full season, uh, regular basis. Okay, where do you want to go with this racing thing? Obviously, a person that wins a track championship, particularly at a really competitive racetrack, racetrack like Raceway Park, and I should say a really tough racetrack, this place isn't easy to win at, let alone win, to win a race, let alone win a track championship. Where do you want to go eventually? You've obviously achieved a lot. Well, you know, fortunately in my career, I've, I've uh, been able to drive for a lot of uh, uh, top contending teams here at Raceway, and uh, you know, I'd like to do that at other tracks also, but, uh, you know, the opportunity hasn't come knocking, and uh, there's not, as everybody knows, it's not that uh, uh, it's not that popular, easy to, to uh, break into something like as that. As Bill Venturini has explained over and over again, the most important thing that a driver's got to do is go out and do the PR work and acquire the sponsorship. Has he got it right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it is a lot of, a lot of times you have to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, the right pair of eyes have to see you on, uh, on a particular night, and uh, you impress that fellow. 
and uh, you know it carries on from there. Okay, if we can get a couple of shots of you later in action, I'm hoping to do it. What's your number? Zero. Number zero. Okay, we're going to watch for number zero then. We thank you for spending a little time with us. Please don't run away. Kimmy, step on out here, please. We've got to run because we want to see some action, right? Right. Tell the camera. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Just to give you an idea of how good these guys are, later in the evening, Don Curtinbrink set fast time in the street stock division, then went on to win the trophy dash and then the feature. The other number two car, John Brolick, finished second in the late model feature. And the man whose car wasn't there, Pat Eklund, well, when the car finally arrived, they took it off the trailer and promptly turned 12.056, the quickest lap of the season, and backed it up by winning the late model feature. Well, we're out of time, and we have so much more to show you. Our own Allison DeMore got a chance to drive Mike Carpenter's Street Stalker and actually did pretty well. So well that John Brolick actually let her take a few laps in his potent late model. She turned in a 1598 lap. In addition to Allison's exploits, we've got some great racing footage, including a shot of just how fierce the competition is at Raceway Park. We're going to have to save all that for a later program because we're out of time. And we still have to thank our award-winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthal. John Papke, Randy Benzi, and Tom McGrady. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. Music for Motorsports Unlimited is created by Fireside Recording Studio in Westchester, Illinois, and independent artists Roger Pauly and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we've got to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited, Kim Donahue, Robin Cross, Allison DeMore, Chris Schutz, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me, I'm Paul Schultz, encouraging you to check out all of the motorsports activities in the Chicagoland area. There's some great stuff going on. We'll see you again next week. This program made possible in part by support from Dependable Carburetor, located on 35th Street, just west of Ashland in Chicago, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from JR Auto Body, located on Ashland Avenue at 122nd Street in Chicago. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Tony Izzo's new LaSalle Speedway, located on Route 6 near I-80 and Route 178 in LaSalle, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Westbrook Auto Repair, located on Franklin Avenue and Dora Street in Franklin Park. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue and 138th Street in Blue Island. This program made possible in part by support from Kankakee Speedway, located just off I-57 at the 308 exit in Kankakee, Illinois. The Motorsport Advancement Crusade is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation and enhancement of motorsport. We are entirely funded by voluntary contributions. For more information, write Motorsport. Oh, you could write the whole thing, Motorsport Advancement Crusade, if you like. But mail gets to us just fine, addressed Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois, 60666. Or just call area code 312-478-4224. We enjoy hearing from our audience and encourage you to call or write. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So I'll uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.